All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan, and uh, yeah. Ah, it feels pretty good because yeah, I know you gotta be careful with your thoughts. You know, you feel good, then you'll feel depressed later. But uh, you know, I just kind of can't help it because like you know, you know, getting getting better with like Christianity and it's just like uh, you know, yeah, it's starting to make more and more sense every day. So I don't know. There's like just so much stuff that has happened. Like I don't even know what to even talk about, right? Whether it's programming and you know, learning a little bit more about. You know the coding and networking all that stuff um yeah because yeah there are some really good assets out there too for uh, unity so i so i'm actually thinking i could try to combine a bunch of them and then create the game that i want all right because there's a pretty expensive uh city building one city builder uh unity asset that's like 290 bucks um i think it's this one uh yes i believe it's this well is it this one uh it's either this one or someone else oh yeah this is the one i'm looking at um so this guy sells a cheaper version which is still 300 dollars as you can see here but basically it's a full complete city building with pvp and stuff because basically one of my component modules for my game was to have an actual base obviously we'll have to reconfigure everything to like a sci-fi theme thing all right uh, the, the probably problem is the networking solution he uses for this is actually more uh, general purpose. So you have to have your own SQL database and stuff. So I'm trying to think, like, how I wonder how hard it would be for me to try to uh, change that to using Photon Pun and PlayFab. So, uh, yeah. So it's, you know, it's going to be kind of a big thing. But with that being said, you know, it obviously is, you know, very well liked. So, and these guys actually, you can hire the developers too who made this. But I, I don't know what their um, I don't know what their limitations are going to be. So you know, I did a lot of stuff like that. I finished my photon uh, course, and, and it actually works, which is just kind of like a miracle, uh, especially given like the problems I constantly run into. So I um, so yeah. So I have two instances of the thing, and then like you know, these enemies are actually stuck in the wall, but. You know, for me, I'm just glad there's a chat box. It syncs, like, when you pick up the object or kill the enemies, the uh, which is also an object, right? It, uh, yeah, it actually works. Like, the goal adds up correctly. I don't get that stupid error. It's like, well, you know, this has no instantiate ID, blah, 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 right? And then it's like, oh, thank God. Yeah, but the way, I, the way it works is everything here is spawned into the game, so it's automatically instantiated. So I don't even have to worry about all that stuff. So going forward, that's basically just how I'm going to do it. Because, again, for whatever reason, Photon Pun, uh, Astelor GitHub, uh, good. let's see, Photon Pun. All right, again, as I wrote here, for some reason, the Photon, the Photon Engine, the Photon Pun Engine, they, just don't, they want you to make sure that you manually instantiate everything and keep direct track of it. I don't know why they make it so convoluted. But they're the experts in networking, so I think the reason why they do that has to do with server performance. So they don't want like a bunch of amateur or even advanced developers doing too much crazy stuff and then clogging up the photon network. So they for they basically force you to do it a different way. I think that's what it is. Uh, but I mean, the flip side is the help sections, like on the forums, when people are running this exact same problem, which is what I read over here. Uh, they come up with like really complex code that just makes it even more like taxing on the system too. So it's like, okay, so maybe I have to redesign the server logic from the ground up instead. And that's like so much, and that's actually so much better. And I uh, watched a YouTube video last night where the guy talked about it. He said the number one thing, uh, he's actually, a, I don't know if he's, Funny how he's a Jewish guy too, right? You know, like well, I mean, basically when you're a high IQ like me, you'll notice that you know a lot of the high IQ people you'll run into is usually whites, Jews, and Asians, or Chinese people in particular. So it winds up being a pretty small club, you know. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll leave the conspiracy theories to everyone else, but it just happens to be that way, right? Because there's a you know, because there really is a genetic reason for like IQ and stuff, but you're not allowed to talk about it now, so. Uh, that's just how it goes. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to talk about it uh, honestly and without judgment, though someday, you know, without having to worry about getting censored. 
But anyway, he knows what he's talking about. He's a self-taught programmer. And uh, he actually said, yeah, you want... Uh, uh, let's see. Actually, I could find it on YouTube. Uh, number one... Um, Anthony Mackie explains why Hollywood movies suck now. Uh, I'm surprised they even allow him to talk, talk about that, but who knows. Uh, number one thing to remember... Uh, number one thing to master to become a self-taught programmer. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, yes, this guy. Andy Sterkowitz, right? Uh, he's got, I mean, he's, uh, I mean, he's focused more on just getting a job as a developer. Obviously, I'm not that, but, you know, this video was really good. Um, let's see. We can, hey, everybody. How's it? See if we can find the, uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, here we go. Um, like, <clears throat> he actually used this really good analogy where, like, somebody asks you for directions, like, where is the Chipotle? And then you're just like, oh, yeah, it's on, you know, and you give the exact address. And then the guy, and then the guy or girl is like, well, I'm not from around here, so how do I get there? And then you actually stand there for a while and go, oh, okay. And depending on how, who or how you are, right, you'll give different directions, you know, go down this thing for, like, you know, X amount of blocks, then take a left and look for this landmark. That's how I do it. And then pick a right, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually, you know, you'll be on this avenue uh, and look to your left, there's the Chipotle. He actually says that as simple as this might seem, this is actually a remarkable thing. That's what he goes on to say. To actually translate one location to another into a set of instructions to always produce a certain result from pretty much anywhere from this map. And computer programming is exactly pretty much like that. You have to learn the language, in this case, in the analogy, we learned the English language to communicate, uh, to convert that into a set of instructions. So that, like, regardless of where the person is, and, or in the case of gaming, what, you know, regardless of they're using a phone or a PC or like the Xbox or whatever, the, the software and the person will always be able to get the desired same result, right? You know, they click a button, they go into the matchmaking, and then, you know, they start playing the Battle Royale or the... The, the the partial full loot uh, you know PVP instance so uh, yeah it was like wow I never really thought of that and he said yeah that's the remarkable thing and that's what he means by uh, computer or or in my case server logic right this process is actually called logic you know don't let the stupid far left birdie bro you know go, going to become mass murderer you know and atheists specifically you know spam you with like their angry judgmental like logic logic science that that's that's not what it is you know uh this is it's just a tool like anything else neither good neither evil so uh yeah so that's what i have to think about it's like you know some because uh because he also says in the beginning of the video like sometimes you just get hooked up on the language and i don't know if he said syntax but it sounded like he was implying that when maybe you should just overall think about the logic and the general purpose like you know, again, the problem I was having was I followed the course, I did exactly the way you did it, but every time an object would drop, it would give me that stupid error. So instead of trying to fo brute force my way in, which I still chose to do on purpose, even though it's something I would prefer not to do, so because I just want to learn more about, like, you know, how this whole thing works, right? So that's one of the good ways to learn is why don't I just change the context, right? Change the logic, which is what, which is create a game object that's empty and then turn it into a spawner that will just auto generate this the things that i want to the clients the same thing it's like oh it's respawning it's like a real game right um let's see oh man do i really want to actually you know what um i guess i could fire up unity i could show you what the course is uh -huh. oh wait i'm no that's obs uh unity hub Oh, actually, no, I really don't want to do that. Uh, hold on. Let me see if uh, it's still in my recycle bin. Because I actually, yeah, it's over here. Uh, restore. Wow, this thing is 60, 66 megabytes? Uh, okay, I'm going to actually just fire up the game here. All right. So, let me see. Um... Video game capture, let's turn that on. Um, 
Photon Battle Royale. Nope, that's not there. Photon RPG. Let's hope this will work. Right? Yes, there you go. So now you can see this game. All right. Oh, that's actually pretty good. You know, OBS was able to capture this cre uh, uh, create room. All right? And then these, believe it or not, these buttons actually take a nice amount of uh, coding or scripting to do. All right? It's just, uh, all right, there's no room here. All right? So, oh. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, there's nothing in there. So that's an interesting little bug. All right, so start game. All right, you know, I can type shit. Because right now, I'm actually on the Photon Network. So now we're online, you know, kill this guy, get the gold. Pow, pow, pow. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I got, I got completely fucked. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, ow. Well, I tried to exploit them, but uh, yeah, we coded it so that they have greater range than my melee range. So, of course, they could still hit me. <laughs> right, I'm trying to get to the... Alright, I'm trying to get to that that heart icon, because what was happening was every time I picked up this heart icon or whatever, it would give me the error, but it doesn't now. Because, again, it's actually a spawner. right? The same spawner that spawns all these enemies, I just simply duplicate it and then it's just, it just does like this. Oh yeah, and this thing had to be scripted too, like this chat box. No, for the most part, my game's not going to have the chat box because I don't want people spamming the N-word or, you know, uh, so-and-so group is, you know, like, I don't mind I don't mind the crazy talk, but the problem is I have to wor really worry about deep platforming risk, right? Because I'm going to, because I made the decision to make this game uh, explicitly Christian, but not overbearing, all right? It's just going to be nice and subtle, all right? Well, not subtle, subdued, all right, so we can X that out. So we can turn off video game capture. So yeah, very cool, right? You know, very basic, very bare bones. And then once I get to start using Playmaker and really start to put all this stuff together, right? Once I feel comfortable enough with the uh, programming knowledge that I'm accumulating. Um, oh, this is Chrome. Uh, that I'm accumulating, you know, yeah, it's, 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 time, it's, time, it's, time, it's time to test my wings, you know? So it's going to be pretty awesome, pretty cool, and uh, yeah, so, you know, a change in server logic just makes things just so much easier. So, you know, now, now so I'm actually fine on playing my video games pretty much not really, right, because I'm just focusing on programming, and I don't feel so bad about it, right? And I still got my mobile gaming, right? You know, in fact, I got my Bit Heroes. That's why I like casual gaming. Like, I can game without actually spending so much time, right? Just click a few buttons and go do something else. It's perfect. It's perfect. You know, oh, and there's one last thing I wanted to also bring up too. This is actually pretty important, All right? The reason why you want to keep an open mind in life is because you don't want to wind up like these idiots. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> All right, there was actually like 10, 15 articles about this, right? So I just happened to pick Reddit because it's like the least cringe, uh, you know, thing out of all the other options. So I didn't want to give the traffic hit to the... Um, <clears throat> left-wing terrorist video game websites that, you know, spam, you know, white man ban and fake news and all that stuff. But basically, they're all complaining that Blizzard is working on several mobile gaming titles, and video gamers, like PC gamers like me, are very angry about it. Of course, I'm not angry about it at all. In fact, I think that's fantastic. And this is just the problem, all right? PC video gamers get mad at Blizzard and shifting focus towards mobile, and I put mobile, Omega lol. Gaming, and then here's a link to the Reddit post where everyone's fuming. Rage all you want, but the millennial generation is becoming what they hate. All right, thanks to Jesse Lee Peterson's teachings, now I understand the dangers, even more of the dangers of anger and hate. They're becoming exactly like the boomers. You become what you hate, resistant to change and angry. Don't be that guy or these people. Like, video game companies for a long time has had to put up with these, like, self-entitled, selfish uh rigid video gamers that just demand everything they're very spoiled and entitled they're exactly like the boomer generation so video game companies now realize you know we can make more money with a lot less risk and we can get rid of like all these shitty customers if we just go into mobile gaming because i mean just look at someone like me all right i'm more successful I've got things to do, but I'm willing to pay good money for a good, you know, microtransaction or mobile game, right? So which me, which translates into a better customer that doesn't give the company shit, the same way PC gamers are constantly complaining. I mean, why wouldn't you as a business want to cater to people like me, right? 
Or you could cater to these greedy people who are like, you charge 60 bucks, I want everything forever, right? And then and then you tell them, but it costs money every day to, ser to run the service. You made it $60 per game. It's like, all right, man, we don't want to deal with you assholes, right? And then, um, yeah, that's exactly it. So, uh, but again, you know, people are in a fallen state, so they're always resistant to change, and then you just get angry because, you know, uh, they're stupid. You know, Satan's their daddy, right? You know, I guess in this case, PC or video gaming's their god or whatever. And, uh, you know, multiply that by like millions of people, right? So, uh, but with that being said, obviously not all gamers are, you know, uptight assholes, right? People will pay, play shitty looking games like this, right? You know, just charge a decent price. And in my case, I figure out the best way to do it is just to make it free to play. Right? Yeah, you'll have a couple of assholes who'll just complain about it, like, I think Nyong, yeah, All right? But he's an angry far-left guy who always likes to uh, do negative story agitating stuff. Because that's what makes him money, and page view clicks. So, you, you just can't but help it. But, uh, yeah, just make it free to play, put microtransactions, and then, you know, whatever. Just let people, uh, you know, do their thing. You know, my system's gonna be pretty brilliant, right? Because, uh, again, I... Just it was an offhand remark by Co Carnage when he was playing Escape from Tarkov with Sacriel, another Twitch streamer. And he said, Yeah, some of the best stuff should be crafted at player only, no trade. And I like that idea. That's why my vendors, you know, with me, of course, at the top for the good side, all right, or good ish side. Uh, you know, yeah, that's where you're gonna get like the no trade and no RMT. I, I was thinking about it yesterday. I'm gonna put a tag also that's called no RMT. So you can buy no trade items. So that'll be the, the second best vendor, right? The uh, girlfriend in my show, who's actually the admiral, so she's second in command, right? And she actually starts out as first, but that's actually part of the story. So I don't want, I definitely will not give that away. Right, and it's nothing bad or any. Well, yes, bad, but not because she and I are, you know, like that. I actually am gonna not have that in my show. All right, that's actually why I would like a girlfriend now, so she could just simply do the voiceover for it, and then the game will make more sense. But you know, oh well, it's just yeah, yeah, you know, it's uh, God will add on to me a girlfriend when appropriate. Uh, you know, but there's just a lot of well, there's a lot of work to do, so. Anyway, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I'll have to figure out the technical mechanics eventually. But yeah, there'll be some no trade items. But if you buy a microtransaction thing with a premium currency, so that's how we'll make money, then you can make it tradable on the auction house. So uh, so you can remove the no trade tag, and that's how. And then also make it eventually real money, so you can pay real money to get these items, right? And then I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna heavily regulate that, right? Because I want it to be pay to win, but I don't want it to be, you know you know, pure prey to win. I still want the free-to-play experience to be at least as good as League of Legends or Dota 2, because they have a pretty good free-to-play experience. Uh, and then they charge cosmetics. Mine, in my case, I'm a little bit more than that. Cosmetics plus actual, like, hey, you lost a lot of gear. Um, so, and then to prevent, um, to prevent legal problems, right? Uh, what I'm going to do is every single item will have like a fixed use, right? So even if you repair and whatever, eventually you'll not not be able to use your, uh, you know, that really awesome chest plate, even though you paid 50 bucks for it. And it'll be pretty obvious too. So so that way people can't complain. It's like you knew when you bought it for 50 bucks, this is what you were buying. If, if I didn't have stuff like that, and then what happens is you pay $50 for an item, and then you die in like the instance... And then someone loots it from your pack, your backpack, because you know you swap your, you were trying to swap items, and then you just got caught in the middle, right? You just lost fifty dollars. That could potentially put me in legal trouble, even though I have the, even though everyone knows it. it it's like you know I want to avoid that. So fixed use, do whatever you want with it. Eventually, it'll run out, and then you have to pay fifty bucks again for that item on the auction house, or maybe ten bucks if you can find a good deal. So yeah, I've I've got I've got the two fifty thousand two hundred fifty thousand IQ poggers working you know working twenty four seven even when I'm sleeping so you know and according to Jesse Lee Peterson that's really just God telling me what to do which is which is just fine with me you know I'm you know the higher IQ I have the higher bandwidth I have to you know let God just shove as much info as he can 
uh, as he thinks he can, you know, you know, shove into me, and then you know, I, I process it. Ah, uh, well, oh my God, twenty minute ramble about that. Well, I don't really feel like doing the news anyway, but anyway, crypto's getting killed, so I mean, I think we already know what's happening. So yeah, let's find out. Uh, Bitcoin's at eleven for this week, for or rather last week. So Google doesn't have the info for this week. So it looks like crypto is down. Um, yeah, I think I remember yesterday saying that it could go either way, but it might be going down because of the fear. So in that case, I would be right. I don't even remember. I'm like doing so much stuff. I can't. I don't even remember what I was saying yesterday. Anyway, Bitcoin does is at 63.4 percent. 24-hour volume is a little higher at 160.2 billion. Uh, 94. $9,428, it's down 3.29%. Okay, Litecoin's at 72.40. All right. Uh, wow, this is actually pretty nasty. Uh, yeah, everything's going down. I don't even see a single green. <laughs> Doggy coin has gone down to 304.8 million. And of course, uh, Steam cryptocurrency is at 19.42 cents. So yeah, it's just it's just a bloodbath all uh, all across the board. Uh, stock markets, eh, it's not too bad. It's a little it's a little down, but not really much. GBTC, of course, is crap. Um, let's see, fine. Okay, now I really don't want to blow my nose on. Yeah, so it's basically what I said yesterday. Coronavirus fears still continue to. Um... All right, I gotta blow my nose. It's starting. To... All right, so coronavirus fears are still definitely taking people. Uh, Twenty drugs with shortest risks due to coronavirus. Yeah, I don't really care. Disney to serve impossible foods, burgers at parks. Yeah, so as much as this Impossible Burger looks really good, I there is actually something really wrong with it. I read about it on the Dissident Right website, which I won't even, I can't even, I can't even hint at it anymore. Um, but uh, definitely a lot of soy, definitely a lot of sodium. There's actually something. <clears throat> excuse me. There's definitely something wrong with it. And it's not real meat, so I would avoid it. Uh, I forgot what it was, but I just remember don't eat the impossible Whopper. Uh, as good as it seems. Uh, great, I accidentally hit the X button. GMC, crap, I'm stamp 22. This is exactly why I find, find this shit so annoying. All right, 22, 45. Oh man, which means it's gonna take forever for the thing to process, but that's all right. Okay, no, it's not my real IP address. But I really don't want to be using a uh, proxy on this uh, on this thing too, because I want to try to keep my. I don't. Want, I don't want anything to have logins, because it because for exactly those reasons. All right, all right. So now that I've removed the IP address, I mean, I'll probably still be safe, because a, it's New York City, and b, it's like you know, there's literally like twenty thousand people here, so you're not going to be able to find me. But you know, it's just for opsec reasons. All right, so JFC coins at three to four. Uh, Sub Satoshi's eh, not real much change. All right, um, coronavirus fears. D -d 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 -d. California man makes two point eight trading. Oh, that's an ad. Um, okay, I mean to be honest, the Yahoo Finance. I used to use Yahoo Finance a lot. I really liked it. Uh, but 80, uh, 808, 404 coin has recovered pretty nicely. It's probably because people are using it as a temporary hedge. Shockingly enough. To uh, you know, against this, but also to reverse some positions because it was really bearish. So now people are just you know, you know, buying up some 404. So that's actually a pretty good sign. Like people still like 404, but they look at it more as like you know, a coin that you just dump. <laughs> so all right, I'll take it. I'll take it. Right. But I mean, the game, my game is still uh, far away. Uh, and also the multiplayer tutorial. The guy who makes the actual photon pawn tutorials. Um, I think his name is Info Geek or something. Very good tutorials. In fact, he actually. Uh, it, uh, I'm actually watch gonna watch the tutorials on how to make a quick match. Uh, so it's very good. Uh, that way, because I know Photon Pun actually has that function too. So it'll be interesting to see. Because uh, um, he actually manually coded it, but Photon does have a matchmaking thing. Actually, we're already pretty long, so. Uh, there we go. 
Hmm. Uh, excuse me. But he said, but so he's in a separate video that one of the most difficult things about making a multiplayer game is finding people to play with. Uh, and I vaguely remember that is actually a challenge because when you start out, nobody knows about your game, and then the other problem is even if they know about it, when they queue into the game, it's just them. I remember I used to a long time ago, like 10, 15 years ago, I bought like a Counter Strike 1.6 server because I got sick and tired of constantly getting banned. And nobody played in it because the problem is people would occasionally come in, but it was just themselves, right? And then I could, and then at the, the stupid server that I rented out did not have bots. If people could at least play with bots, that would, you know, have helped a lot of things. So knowing that, it's like, oh yeah, so I'm gonna have to deal with that problem too, all right? Because I can market all I want, but the, even if it's free, but the problem is people are not connecting at the same time. So I have to figure, and then he said the simple solution to that would be create an experience where in the multiplayer game, the person, who, if he's just playing by himself, he can still have fun. And that's, and that's where, I, and I saw a different tutorial on YouTube channel where he says, how to make a simple turret, like an actual gun turret, right? And then it was like a 19 minute tutorial, like, ah, I know exactly what to do. And this is even better because my original idea was to have NPCs that chase you. The problem is that's more network, that's more... Um, that's more stress on the server. It by itself, it's not a problem, but if you multiply by like you know a million people, right? That's a lot of bandwidth. That's a lot of server resources, right? And that means more money and more and more. And the other problem is, what if that actually degrades uh, the game performance? So the less stuff that the game has to do, but still give a good experience, the better. So a turret is perfect. That is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, so just I just create turrets throughout the map that count as players. So even if you solo queue, you can just kill the turrets and then just win. Even and then eventually you'll realize, oh, it's just me and the turrets. This is for the battle royale thing. Uh, but eventually the game's going to have an MMORPG aspect, so the single player person will eventually keep coming back to play. And then eventually other people will see that, and, oh, it just happens that oh, now you have to fight against another player plus the tur deal with the turrets. So uh, that's. It's it's like Genesis. That's how you start the whole cycle. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So anyway, four hundred four coin doing pretty well. Eight to nine because everyone else is doing badly. Um, so I suspect when once this whole coronavirus stuff uh, subsides, if it does, um, you know, crypto will go back up. The markets will go back up, and of course, four hundred four coin will continue on its merry way back down. So uh, yeah. Two by two coins at 68 to 69. So uh, this is also benefiting from uh, you know thingamajig uh, downturn markets. And look, there's a cryptocurrency called Corona. <laughs> Apparently, they're not having a problem right, as of today. So this looks pretty solid. Uh, compound coin um, 4,051 to 4,583. So this actually took a, a little small nosedive, but still pretty stable. And uh, to be honest, I don't really care about the news. We already know what's going on. It's the um, it's the uh, uh, coronavirus. So I think we could safely say Bernie Sanders is going to be pretty good, and idiot Bloomberg has just done nothing. So all right, works for me. So it will be Trump versus uh, the communists, um, and. Ah, I just wish everybody took censorship more seriously, but, um, I don't know, Trump's actually clearing out deep states, so, I don't know, maybe when he gets re-elected he'll do something? All right. Uh, SEC Commission issues advice for crypto-curious investors, warns against ICOs and digital asset scams, uh, damages from Deutsche Bank, da-da-da-da, paradigm shift. All right, so there's actually nothing here. Uh, that is a very fruity looking, oh, yeah, I'm not going to use that. Uh, I really like these colored thumbnails. I just don't like what it looks like. Uh, I guess we could use this as a thumbnail. Yeah, so I don't even know what I'm going to title this video. Because it was really just more like my personal stuff. So I guess I'll go along with those lines, even if only like two of you watch it. Actually, it's going to be two of you. <laughs> I already know who the two are. Well, that's okay. Uh, fresh drug dealer. There's wait. Let me refresh this page. Yeah, there we go. It's like wondering. Um, bearish chart pattern. Market Bitcoin traditional markets dropped three percent. Yeah, coronavirus is getting hit harder. 
liquidating 41 million dollars in assets yeah people are really scared of this coronavirus stuff um Dow Jones yeah see because yeah crypto is not a hedge against the stock markets not anymore all right you know because again you're dealing with human beings they do whatever they want right they don't follow a logical pattern like you know computer programming does so so again you look at the fundamentals because when you look at like correlations that's technical analysis and uh, what have i always have said technical analysis is always 99 or 100 percent of the time all bullshit. that's why i don't do it but i still look at it from time to time because it can be it can still be somewhat helpful for very basic stuff basic simple stuff like for example you know flatlining and then going okay i'm not sure where it goes and it does look pretty bad so it's going to go down because of coronavirus i don't know how long it'll last i guess that's technically technicals right <clears throat> right but i'm trying to figure out what the fundamental mood is because eventually it's about investor sentiment if people just don't feel like buying something and they're feeling negative and fearful maybe even angry well guess what's going to happen to the price it's going to tank right you know it's just how it's just how the human beings work right and then when people feel euphoric and feel good you know things go up because they're like well i feel on top of the world i'm gonna buy up everything and the price goes up and on and on the cycle goes forever so anyway uh not really much um let's see i haven't been updating i haven't been updating here i don't know what happened but like four people just left my my uh, bit shoot but maybe it's because they noticed that i don't do political stuff anymore so anyway if you like what you saw read or heard hit the like button the follow button or subscribe button from uh where you're watching this from or my youtubes at youtube.com forward slash jmc radio god i love i love how short this thing is it's nice short memorable very brandable and you know exactly what it is it's perfect um make sure you smash that subscribe button on the right hand side of this page and uh yeah that's just you know whatever you know do what you want anyway i'm honestly done for the day i kept it to 32 minutes i time stamped the thing that i need to remove so i can remove my ip address so um but yeah there was nothing there about actual that it was just that stupid annoying thing i really just hate i really hate that they just do that here's your what why don't they just say hey do you happen to live at this address at this zip code it's like it's so irritating i really don't like that it's like you know hello mcfly you know privacy is calling but oh well yeah you you, you do what you can that actually could be a problem it's like if i do a live stream yeah that might actually be a problem uh, if I do a live stream, I'm going to have to, uh, you know, figure something out. Um, so, yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, um, enjoy your Saturday or night. I will see you all in tomorrow's video. And uh, I have to figure out what the uh, title of this video is going to be. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Judson Chen, JMC Coin, 404 Coin, and uh, whatchamacallit. Yeah, I guess it's a good thumbnail.